Hey folks, BFG Neil here and I'm back with another weekly roundup of news and information about the Helium Network. At the end of the video I'll go over your questions from last week so leave a comment below and you'll get featured in the next episode. Before we get going I just want to say thanks again for the support and please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's get on with the news. The first piece of news I want to go over from last week's video is that, that right afterwards they changed the POC interval rate. Um, it's been raised from 360 to 475. Um, this means that in average every hotspot, so not just yours, will beacon less. But because they're beaconing less, the same amount is still issued, so they should receive more per event. Um, the second change is from max of 18 to 14 witnesses. Now, a lot, the, the one comment I've seen from this is people saying, you know, they're lowering earnings, they're changing things without um, a hit process. But you have to understand that if they hadn't have done this, we would have likely have seen faults. We would likely have seen um, major earning drops because of it. So it's really important that things like this are kept um, available to change. So, you know, a reaction to a problem, if they're not behind hit processes, we would have seen, um, you know, days of uh, faults and things like that and transfer not going through. So it's a really needed um, solution. And eventually when we move to a layer two solution, if hit 51 and 50 go through, and we can improve this situation and you know, we can have a particular LoRa WAN validator that can handle POC and it can handle these challenges and this rate could be improved. And my personal feeling is, is a hotspot feels like it's not working unless you get some sort of notification per hour. But you have to remember how many times a day do you actually need to know that coverage is in an area. You know, in theory, that could be done once a day, once every few days. But, you know, they just don't feel alive when it's like that. So, you know, although if it was once a day, you would likely get a high earnings from it. You know, if that one was bad, then it's it's very it's very um, detrimental to your setup. So having a faster rate is something that we definitely need, but it's just not available at this time. The second piece of news I want to go over is a release um, from Jay Marcelino um, at the Rack team. A lot of people have been having to replace SD cards this week um, and last week's and my video is absolutely blown up for people that want to replace SD cards. So I thought this was really important to point out that um, a lot of the time when you replace the SD cards, it has to download a new snapshot, right? And those snapshots have been behind, but recently we've had a couple of great ones come through really quick succession. So it's helped improve the situation. But um, Jose put an alert out to say, you know, they're now, they've now promoted a snapshot, but one of the one of the points that I want to point out here is that they said that um, there's going to be an interim fast sync solution before we even move to firmware later this quarter. So Rack are in an interesting position where they, they use the Helium original firmware. So they can't edit it, they can't update it, they have to write their own. Um, and what he's saying is that they are writing their own, they have got their own remote dashboard coming, but um, in the interim, they're gonna release something that includes fast sync to make this process better. Next bit of news looks really inconspicuous, but it's a huge thing for hotspot owners. Discovery mode coming back. Now, there was a fault that caused halts, um, and this is the PR that fixes it. So once this PR is in, we'll have news about when discovery mode and how discovery mode is returning. So huge news, right? Actually huge news. Next bit of news I wanna go over is transfer hotspot V2. This is almost ready, they've made the chain variables for it. Um, whereas previously you had to have recent activity on hotspot, this was a check to show that the hotspot's still working basically. The new one is just gonna be a one-way swap. So you just send it to them, there's no delay, there's no confirmation, it just happens. This also means data-only hotspots can be transferred as well. So at the moment they couldn't be done because they can't have POC activity. So you can't transfer them from one wallet to another. Up next is a bit of news I saw on Twitter and um, basically token terminals show you product revenue for the last 30 days per network. Now obviously ETH is huge, ETH is one of the biggest movers in this market but if we show it on a logarithmic scale you'll quite clearly see that Helium is third. So this is including all onboards, all, all location asserts. Onboards are obviously burnt, um, there's also data transfer included in this and we're at the 5 million mark per month which is just huge you know. This figure is just going to keep going and going. You know, we've overtaken Solana, and it won't be long before we take Avalanche. So, amazing news! Up next, just want to give a shout out to a project, um, Helium Jobs. This is uh, created by the same guy that created Helium Vision, and it's just a great source of jobs on the Helium network. So, 
There's, um, this is actually the Helium Vision um, founders. There's Gristle King has some jobs here, but there's also jobs right down to Parley Labs, um, Helium Inc. And there's also some Bobcat jobs on here as well. So give it a shout if you're looking for work. And the Helium Network is crazy right now. So it's expanding so fast that people are just desperately needed. So there's some really good jobs about. So if you're looking to make that jump, this is a great place to have a look. And that's the news. So if you have any features that you think I've missed, please send them to me. Um, I'm available on Twitter, Discord. And if you have a project you'd like featured or would like me to talk over with you, um, we can have an interview and talk over the project, you know, share it to a wider audience. I'd love to do that. So please get in touch. OK, let's get on with some FAQ questions. First FAQ question of the week comes from Andre. He asks, would giving a shout out to get minted make it easier to actually get one of their miners in hand? So how about it? Minted? Rack? We're going to get a drop? The next FAQ question comes from C0Z on Twitter and he asks, Neil, could you give a demo of how to use an NVNA properly and make suggestions for what adapters are needed and suppliers? Now, I'm fairly new with NanoVNAs. This is my one. Um, they're only about $30, $40 or £30, £40 for us. But what these allow you to do is test antennas and cable and see how well they're functioning. Um, you can also measure the loss on cables. So I'm not the, a full expert on how to use it. So what I'm going to do is drop a link in the description below to Andreas Bees, the guy with the Swedish accent. He goes through full demonstrations of how to read these things, um, what Smith charts are, what VSWR is, and how to do it. And in regards to adapters and things, generally you really don't want to use an adapter. So every time you break the cable, you add a little bit of loss. So, you know, if you broke it from um, the hotspot to a window pass through cable, that break would add loss, right? So there's loss in that cable as well, the window pass through because it's different. So really you want to try and stick away from adapters. So generally your antenna will come in an N type format and the hotspot will come in an RPSMA format. So if you get a cable made up, that is the best way to do it. And if you do find yourself needing an adapter, generally it's just RPSMA to SMA or N type male to N type female. But again, I would really preference a well-made cable rather than adding loss with adapters. The next FAQ question comes from Killian Martin. He says, hi Neil, great work on the videos, thank you. In the AMA last week, you touched on mapping. Uh, one thing I can't find about is the cost of mapping, so not the equipment. Um, he's a truck driver in his day job, uh, goes cross country. Is, is mapping for him a good idea? The short and simple answer is yes, it is really cheap. So data is a fixed term cost and you've got to think about how often you check in. The best way to see the usage cost is on the Helium site. If you go to use, there is actually a data calculator. So what I've done is I put in one device that transfers packets every minute and what is the yearly cost for that? Now, $5.26 for a whole year is infinitely smaller than current solutions. So if you're on a 4G tracker, for example, you'd pay for the SIM plan, you pay, um, you know, $5 a month for, then the device itself would be in the $150, $200 range. And then if you want to access that information, you have to subscribe to a service. So it gets very, very expensive very quickly. But on the market now, there are so many different GPS trackers. Uh, this is a Dragino LGT92 that I use. Very nice little board. Um, I've got TTGO T-beams, which are nice and cheap. You have to print your own cases for them. They, they actually come in a nice little box. So you can use that, but it's, it's not, it doesn't look very nice. Uh, all the way up to things like the Glamos Walker. This is a field tester device. So this is a bit more for hotspot owners that want to verify coverage and verify their hotspots are working and also maybe place sensors in the field. So you need to be able to test uh, different spreading factors, what, what is happening. So this is a bit more of an advanced one. Um, but the Helium Developer Kit comes with a mapper solution. So this is this is the Helium Developer Kit. This is a whiz block. And all I've done is put the GPS module in here. So this is now a full featured mapper. Um, and then there's also C do one um, with disk 91 called the WIO terminal. Now this is one I've, I've printed before seed start producing them. So I printed in my own case for it, but great little features and very easy to get going with. So if you find yourself driving a lot, it's very preferential if you can get a map because you'll just cover areas that most won't, you know, a host will generally go where they go and they, they, they stick to their routines and don't travel very much. So for someone that's roaming all the time, it's, it's invaluable to get going. Um, what I've done is I've dropped a link in the description below of how to get go going with coverage um, mapping. Um, there's a documentation page that shows you everything you need to do to get going, loads of different choices. But if you, if you get stuck, head to Discord, there's a mappers channel, talk to folks, they'll walk you through it and help you get set up.
And that's it for another weekly roundup. So remember, if you've got any FAQ questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them next week. If you have a project that you want me to show or a feature that I missed, please get in touch. Um, I'd love to promote you on this channel. I'd love to help um, users of the network grow and allow hosts to find these solutions that make their lives easier. Um, I'm working on one myself. Um, it's going to be upcoming. I'm going to show it off on here. Uh, the idea is asset tracking with an app with QR code. We also have some new features coming from Helium Status soon that we think users are going to love. So we're going to showcase them here and I'd, I'd love to do the same for you. Okay, bye for now.